Hi, my name is Cold Biero. let's start with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I can say honestly that this is one of the most entertaining games I have played in a few recent years, and as you can imagine I played or at least tried a lot of games just because I have to, and Fallen Order really impressed me. Game uses the Dark Souls mechanic where after every save game all the enemies respawn, but unlike Dark Souls it has difficulty levels, and I can proudly say that I played it on story mode, and still had some challenges thrown at me. I even managed to die several times and in general I felt like I played on normal. So prepare to swallow your pride and do the same if you are not some hard and Dark Souls veteran. And even if you are, the hardest difficulty setting will make you sweat like crazy. The coolest thing here is that the game lets you feel like a true Jedi. I'll be honest, swinging a lightsaber in Fallen Order felt almost the same as fighting as a Geralt in Witcher 3. If you switch the characters you could easily play either game without problems, just be sure you have the controller. Without one it's a no-go. And this Steam Spring Sale price is a joke. This game is a must-play. Plague Tale Requiem after escaping your devastated homeland, you will travel far south to new regions and various forsaken cities. There you attempt to start a new life and control Hugo's curse. Yeah, the kid is cursed, but you instead of dropping him into the ocean and forgetting which ocean it was, you, you travel with him. You know, no Hugo, no problems, but you chose problems. So everything that happens from now on is basically your fault. So when Hugo's powers reawaken, oh surprise surprise, death and destruction return in a flood of devouring rats you probably all know from the first part of this beautiful game. Forced to flee once more, you place your hopes in a prophesized island that may hold the key to saving Hugo. The game will let you know the price of saving those you love in a desperate struggle for survival and you ain't gonna like it. You will strike from the shadows or unleash hell, overcoming foes and challenges with a variety of weapons, tools and unearthly powers. People on Steam are talking that this game will make you cry, mostly because of the story, but a tear or two will also drop when you realize that the game is super slow and your movement speed is even slower. Despite that, Plague Tale Requiem has about 90% of positive reviews and if you like story-rich adventure games, it's a must-play sooner or later. Control Ultimate Edition a corruptive presence has invaded the Federal Bureau of Control, and only you have the power to stop it. The world around you is now your weapon in an epic fight to annihilate an ominous enemy across the deep and unpredictable environments. Containment has failed, humanity is at stake, so it's time to kick some paranormal ass. SCP vibes are really strong here. To be fair, this game feels like you are in a dream all the time. Well, nightmare to be exact, because everything is changing all the time and not for good. The game is not scary, but it's on that's for sure. People on Steam are saying that the story is very good, the game itself is out of the ordinary and it has some really cool puzzles to solve. So a bit of everything for everyone. Ashes of Singularity you will battle for control of the galaxy as the advanced human race or their eternal foes, aliens named the Substrate. You will dive into massive battles with thousands of units in huge, really detailed maps and that distinguishes this game from many other RTSs. Although keep in mind that these amounts of units in Ashes of Singularity require massive computing power. Not as massive as your mama. You can play the game alone or online with friends in ranked or unranked multiplayer mode or play it by yourself against a powerful non-cheating AI in skirmish or campaign mode. That is actually great, a well-made and, just like your wife, let's hope, non-cheating AI is kinda rare because it's hard to make. So developers tend to cut it out and replace it with a fake AI instead, that gets unlimited resources and can see you through the fog of war. It's like giving see-through closed glasses to the random pervert. But not this time, Ashes of Singularity doesn't cut corners. Or AIs. People on Steam are saying that the game has a fun level editor and the amount of lasers is in Never too high. Hades. This is one of the most known action RPG roguelite games in our universe, and it holds third place on the best Steam rankings. That is huge, let it sink, third place among all the games on Steam. So here your goal is to avoid dying, but the game mechanics are made in a way that you will die a lot and those deaths will make you stronger. That is the beauty of Hades, instead of raging when your protagonist dies, you are happy and then you try again and again because it's very fun or because you are some kind of mad. As a hist. Let's be fair, it's probably because of that, and it's okay, I don't judge. Immortals Phoenix Rising 
Because it was an Epic Store exclusive, it has various issues, from missing content to controller problems, and of course, it needs you to have a Ubisoft account as well. But in general, this is an amazing title. I bought this game for a full price on the release day, and I can proudly say that this is probably the best game I have played in the year of 2020s. I was expecting nothing from it. It looks childish and colorful, and I don't like any of that. You know, I'm 40 years old, you can't buy me with colors. But I started to feel that something is a sus with my prejudice this when I heard the first joke, which was really good, <laughs> but I'm not gonna spoil it to you. And later I started to realize that the whole game is filled with jokes that I find funny, even in the character creation menu. One thing is that during the whole game, gods Zeus and Prometheus are talking in the background about you in the past tense, like everything you do has already happened. You know, when they say, and then he saw a terrible monster. You can be sure that you will see a terrible monster in a second, because it's your story that has already Already happened, but you don't know how yet, only gods know. In other words, you have to live the story gods are talking about. So let's hope that they don't say anything like, and then he put some pineapples into his potato salad. No, 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 no. This is not a horror game, so let's hope they will not say that. Although, avoid this game if you don't like puzzles. Phoenix Rising is filled with them, but if you like solving puzzles in Skyrim, for example, you will feel right at home here as well. Desperados 3. You can kill quietly with a knife or take out multiple foes with your revolvers. I especially like the knife part, it somehow feels more personal and, of course, requires more skill. Scenarios Desperados presents are far from cliché. Situations are quite original but also familiar with a nice vibe of Wild West. I say vibe because here you will fight not only in small frontier towns, but also in creepy swamps, riverbanks and even in sprawling modern cities. Here you can choose between non-lethal and deadly attacks, meaning that you can finish the game without killing anyone. I have no idea why you may do that, it's it's boring. Anyway, Desperados 3 is like an old good Commandos game, but modern with amazing visuals and great quality overall. In other waters. This is one of the coolest indie games I have stumbled on recently. Story begins when Ellery is called to the planet Gliese, only to arrive at an abandoned base. She finds herself adrift in an ocean of secrets with little more than a malfunctioning diving suit and a strange AI to guide her. And you play not as an Ellery, as you already assumed, but as this AI. How the turns have tabled, huh? So you have to guide Ellery and keep her safe as you dive deeper and explore an underwater alien landscape. The planet's unique life and its dark history are are your stone cover and the bond between you and Ellery will be tested by the secrets you learn. People are talking that this game floats somewhere between an art project, a work of fiction and an experiment in minimalist UI design. I absolutely agree and I will add the fact that this game is awesome and if you like stuff like that you should definitely try it out. East Shade. Nothing shady about this game, in fact it's hard to find some darker corner here. You are a traveling painter exploring the island and capturing the world on your canvas. Talk to the inhabitants to learn about their lives, make friends and help those in need. Visit cities, scale summits, unearth mysteries and discover forgotten places. Although as I always say, if you are used to killing stuff in games, you will find the lack of violence here really disturbing. You will find no enemies to maim, hack or slash, nobody to shoot, no dripping blood or intestines on the floor, and no usual possessed undead babies climbing down on the ceiling, so keep in mind that all this friendliness may really shock you, play it at your own risk. Observer System Redux this is a cyberpunk horror game where you will discover a dark world beset by plagues and war. You will take on the role of the new frontline of neural police as you hack into the jagged minds of the insane. So as you hack into the unstable minds of criminals and victims to look for clues, you will relive their darkest fears, forcing you to question your own reality and your own sanity. You know, maybe you are the one who's actually insane. All in all, this is a dark psychological horror detective game, so be sure you have the mental balls to play it. Game is not for everyone, but if you like creepy sci-fi stories, it's definitely your spoon of potato salad. People on Steam are saying that the game is kinda scary, but really nicely welded together and is an absolutely unique experience. Monument Valley you will embark on a journey as Ida, the silent princess, through impossible environments and illusionary puzzles. You will experience this meditative and calming puzzle game by manipulating monuments and creating evolving paths to explore new, surreal and mysterious worlds. So basically you will solve tricky but immensely satisfying puzzles with optical illusions at their core, evolve landscapes to reveal pathways that would have otherwise been impossible, and as you progress discover beautiful architecture transforming landscapes 
escapes through pushing, pulling, clicking, raising, lowering and more. 98% of positive reviews is not a thing you can easily ignore, so don't. This is Lord of Rings themed or killing simulator. I don't even know how else to name it because all you do here is orc killing. Even orcs kill other orcs here. And you will hack, slash and smash right and left, left and right because here you are true combat god and nobody can withstand your power. Well, except probably Darth Vader and Thanos and well, Jason Statham could kick your ass as well. And Machete. Machete could definitely make a meat burrito out of you. But you will not find any of them in this game so you are safe to play without any fear. The game has 87% of positive reviews on Steam, so if you somehow miss this awesome open world RPG game, there is no better time than now to get it. It takes two. As you can probably imagine, this is a co-op game for two people. Here you can invite a friend to join for free with Friends Pass and together master unique and connected character abilities, help each other with the obstacles and have a great time in general. For example, my friend who's 40 plus years old and usually plays games like Detroit Become Human, Observer, The Last of Us and similar gloomy stuff played this with his wife and he said that this was the best game he tried in half a year. So it's obvious that the game has no age or genre restrictions, it's just pure fun. So grab your mother-in-law and have fun together. It Takes Two has overwhelmingly positive reviews, but that's probably obvious as well. Firewatch this is one of the most immersive games I have ever played. Firewatch is a single-player first-person mystery set in a Wyoming wilderness. The year is 1989. You are a man named Henry who has retreated from his messy life to work as a fire lookout in a lush forest. An especially hot and dry summer is a great thing everywhere, except where you work. One smoking cigarette butt or one shard of broken glass and this beauty can become a real hell on earth in seconds. This is a game for adults with adult conversation themes. Despite that it is colorful and beautiful and all, it's not made for kids in any way. Metal Hellsinger the game has 97% of positive reviews and that is insane. You'll kill demons to the rhythm of metal and vengeance on an infernal journey through the eight hells. This is a rhythm first-person shooter bursting with monsters, gorgeous weapons and heavy metal music created for this game by amazing metal geniuses, like Serge Tankian for example. Yeah, Serge himself sings a new song created especially for this game. And you kill demons listening to it. The song was created with the idea behind it that it is meant to be listened to while killing demons. It is hard to wrap my head around this fact and how metal it actually is. So if you like fast-paced first-person shooter games like Shadow Warrior or Doom, search no more. Metal Hellsinger is what you need to kill your boredom with style. Goro Goa. An overwhelmingly 97% positive review score is not something we can easily ignore. Goro Goa is an elegant evolution of the puzzle genre told through a beautiful hand-drawn story. The gameplay is wholly original, consisting of lavishly illustrated panels which you arrange and combine in various ways to solve artsy puzzles. Impeccably simple yet satisfyingly complex. People on Steam are talking that this may be the best puzzle game ever created. Well, I have to agree, it is definitely one of the best. Very imaginative and made entirely of art. Iron Marines well, it's hard to introduce this game somehow differently than as a flat 2D StarCraft. And you know what? It's great! The art style may look very familiar to some of you because the game is made by the same developers of Kingdom Rush. As I always say, one of the best tower defense games ever made. So he will recruit and train the greatest heroes in the galaxy, lead them into dangerous missions against near impossible odds and unleash their mighty powers and abilities. In short, you will get 21 campaign missions across 3 different worlds and each mission will require new tactics and actions to achieve victory. You will have to defeat unique bosses and control 14 different heroes. Game allows you to choose from several difficulty modes, meaning that it can be enjoyed either by noobs or by veterans of the genre. Game is quite funny, filled with easter eggs and more than 70 achievements for you to unlock. People on Steam are saying that if you want to play something like StarCraft but don't want to fry your brain while doing that, Iron Marines is the next best thing. Game has a very positive review score, so this may very very well be what you were looking for after all. And if you like the Steam Spring Sale video, there is another. Click on it, let's continue our journey, let's be friends with benefits. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!